Almost all of us are familiar with banks. We use banks to deposit our money and earn interest on it. We may also take out bank loans to buy houses and cars. There are many types of banks. Commercial and savings and loans banks provide banking and loan products to consumers like you and I. In this session I'm going to talk about a different type of bank. A bank which does not take deposits from individuals. A bank that assists individuals, corporations and governments in raising large amounts of capital. Such a bank is an investment bank. So let us say company X wishes to expand its operations by acquiring a few other smaller companies. Company X will need to know the best time to seal the deal and yes, it will need money, lots of it. Money can be raised in many ways, but which is the best way? Lending their expertise to a company to help it determine the best strategy for raising money or capital is one of the roles of an investment bank. I would like to add that another term for investment banking is corporate finance. An investment banker consults with a company to determine its capital needs. During this meeting the investment bank discusses funding options for the company. These funding options may include offering shares of the company's stock in what is called an initial public offering or IPO. The company may also decide with the help of the investment bank to issue debt in the form of bonds. Investment banks do not generally have funds they can tap into and immediately write a check. Instead, they have a network of investors that trust the investment banker to bring them quality deals. Investment banks thus put these investors in touch with companies seeking funds. Once the capital activity is decided, the investment bank helps prepare all the necessary documentation. Documentation that accurately presents the details and protects both the company and the investor from any misunderstandings. Investment bankers also ensure that all government regulations have been followed. Let me assume that you are a high school student and considering a career as an investment banker. Where do you start? It would surely help if you are fond of and good at the following subjects: math, accounting, business economics, computer science and physics. Besides the general subjects, extracurricular activities such as team sport, debating and public speaking will help you in engaging with other people and in teaching you to be persuasive and getting your voice heard. At university it would help to study either a bachelor of commerce or a business science degree specializing in finance, investments, accounting or commercial law. With this career however comes the responsibility to study further. As a result professional designations are required such as chartered accountancy, chartered financial analyst or a masters in business administration. A career in finance is not for everyone. Although you may earn more than your peers in other careers, there will be deadlines and commitments that you would need to meet that could potentially eat into your personal time. The trick however is to try to live a balanced life, not to overcome it and not to compromise on the things you value such as spending time with friends and family. Investment banks vary in size from large banks that offer a wide array of services to smaller boutique banks which are more specialized. Some examples of large banks are Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch. The hierarchy within the investment banking division is well defined. Once you finish your undergraduate degree, you could enter this industry as an analyst. Analysts work on presentations, analysis and administration tasks. Long hours are pretty common. After a few years or after a postgraduate degree, you could move into the role of an associate. They oversee work done by analysts. An associate's role also tends to have a bigger client interaction component. After a few years in this role, you could move into the role of a vice president and then senior vice president. This is where the managerial work tends to kick in. Work at this stage becomes more client relationship oriented. The focus is also on executing deals with customers. In due course of time you could move into the role of an MD or managing director. Almost all of an MD's time is spent on client relationship and sourcing new clients. 
So this brings us to the end of the session. The objective was to give you a flavor of the role. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video. Thanks and good luck.